From the fast action of the trading pit to the power brokers making the headlines, you'll hear it all on the Traders Network Show with your host, Michael Yorba. All right. Michael interviews the front page titans about the latest in trading tools and market trends in stocks, commodities, bonds, forex, and derivatives. The Traders Network helps you stay ahead of the curve and delivers tomorrow's trade today. Now, here's your host, Michael Yorba. Welcome back to the Traders Network. I'm Michael Yorba, your host. Thanks for joining us. Broadcasting to you live from the Dallas KFXR 1190 AM Clear Channel Studios and worldwide through yorbamedia.com. All right, we're drawing the year to a close. It has been a tremendous year for me and a lot of the guests. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of behind the scenes that goes on here to make the show happen. And I wanted to take a moment, if I could, and uh, bring an old friend of mine on who has really really been the backbone of a lot of the content As a matter of fact a, a, a good 90 percent of the content that you've had the pleasure of listening to and and really really experiencing matt bird uh is the uh president of a, a company called 1-800 public relations and he is my pr agent He's done a remarkable job of getting exposure to the show and bringing true raw talent to the show that has, in some cases, has, has just exploded on the scene and has been able to give me embargo interviews that Fox can't get, ABC can't get, C, CNBC can't get, and Bloomberg, in some cases, just can't get. This guy brings stuff out to the surface that uh, you just can't get anywhere else. Matt Bird, welcome to the show. How have you been, buddy? Michael, thanks for the introduction. Uh, thank you for having me on the show. I appreciate it. All right, my pleasure. You know, uh, you rang the NASDAQ clo uh, closing bell. You won PR Man of the Year. You're nominated again. You and I together got nominated for a Peabody, and you got nominated mm -hmm. for uh, Entrepreneur of the Year. Mm -hmm. You know, you're one of the most influential people in the industry, and I can go on all day, but why don't you tell the listeners about yourself, about 1-800-PR, what you do, and, and you know, take us, take us into the future. What's going to happen next with us? Well, um, I mean, you, you cover a lot of my background, but 1-800-PR um, public relations um, is really my baby right now, and um, basically the, the focus uh, of the company and our mission statement is to bring tier one PR marketing services to small, medium sized businesses and, um, on a performance basis. Um, we, we hope to lead, uh, the nation with performance based business and deliverables to help small businesses grow. Um, anywhere from, you know, news distribution to PR bookings and, and, uh, or just supporting web development services. You know, you have your finger on the pulse about what's going to happen next in the industry. I, I, I'd like you to talk to, well, you do. I mean, I, I heard you chuckling, and, and I know you're modest about this, but actually if it hasn't been, hadn't been for the brainstorming sessions you and I have had, we wouldn't have been able to, to stay ahead of everybody else in, in radio when it comes to staying ahead of the trend. Tell me what you see in the future, trends coming to the media business, your side and my side. Well, I think the biggest thing is like this, the local celestial versus the digital content marketing. I mean, think any, any company out there today really needs to take a hard look at what traditional media means versus what content marketing is. And we all know what content marketing is uh, on a simplicity, simplicity level, which is like Facebook and you know, social media and networking and those sorts of things. All this stuff is indexable where traditional celestial based media like radio and television, it doesn't have the same kind of indexing, but it generates a high level of credibility and visibility for companies. So, I mean, I definitely see a convergence between the two. I see traditional media, um, you know, it weeds out uh, and, and focuses on the experts and the, and the, the people that are trending uh, within their industry and gives them, you know, credibility to their business model. And then you take that and you distribute that content throughout the web so that people can then find them and, and, uh, and hopefully do some more business or, 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 or um, um, bring some credibility to their company. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Now, mm -hmm. going forward, uh, we've done a little brain testing, brain, you know, uh, teasing, if you will, back and forth with each other. 
Uh, let's let's let the audience in on on some of the things that you've got planned for us because uh, you have you you're a global thinker. You think big. You've got great ideas, and and you're known for keeping a lot of stuff you know close to the vest before you let it out. But give us a little peek behind the kimono for uh, for what you've got <laughs> planned for us. Franchising. We're going to franchise. So one year public relations. Um, what we're trying to do is build the, the country's biggest marketing and PR brand. I mean, you've got 1-800-Flowers and LegalZoom and GoDaddy, and there's really not a resource for small and medium-sized businesses. And, and, you know, aside from all the money that, that can be made from it and, and everybody can profit share, our shareholders and our partners, it's really about helping people at the end of the day. I mean, it's, it's very similar to what you do. You you feature and, and help the listeners and, and, and help companies get exposure and, and educate the market. You know, that's that's our mission statement as well, except we just do it a little more hyper-focused. But... Um, Franchising is definitely where I see 1-800 Public Relations going, and um, and if we're lucky, um, you know, we'll make an impact and, and help you know stimulate the economy a little bit. You know, a lot of these small businesses or you know business owners are cobblers, not very good marketers, and um, and you don't necessarily they don't necessarily know where to go to get tier one you know marketing and PR support, and hopefully we can do that on an affordable level and make our way to corners of each you know, country. You know, there's a lot of, of people that are behind the scenes that really never get noticed. And, uh, I, you know, I wanted to bring that out. You know, you got Bridget Fleming and you got Rachel uh, Eduardo and, and some of these people that work with you to, to help the show actually come off. They work tirelessly way into the wee hours of the night. Let's talk about some of the back end of what it really takes to make a show like this come to come to a position where you can get guys that uh, um, that are in high positions I'll leave the names out you know that, that that give us the recognition that you know our hard work deserves like nominating us for the Peabody this year yeah well you know I can you know I, I get I get the the credit for for all of their hard work but you know there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes I mean I most people don't realize what goes on behind the scenes on a production, like a movie or, or a TV show, or even, you know, for example, your, the Traders Network show, we're working with you, Michael, and there are people working literally around the clock to make sure news is distributed, make sure the guests are teed up, making sure that uh, um, content's right, legal has got to sign off on stuff. So many moving parts that go on behind the scenes, and, and at the end of it, it's a 15- or a 30-minute interview. There might be... You know, Eight hours worth of worth of you know work throughout you know two weeks that take that takes on for for a thirty minute piece and, and in some cases it could be weeks leading up to a fifteen or a five minute uh, five minute statement but it's a lot of hard work and Bridget and and Rachel you know and, and any any past guests who may be tuning in I mean they know the kind of hard work that, that they they go through to get get them on the show and and uh, I have to give them all the credit because if, if without them you know. This show, you know, all, we would not be doing the things that we'd be doing, and the nominations that we've had, and, and the guests that we've had on the show, you know, we wouldn't have been able to pull this off without them. So, um, you know, I hats off to my team, and and um, I'm looking forward to you know a new year of this. So we're coming into 2015, and we got some really big things in, in the pipeline, which is exciting, and um, yeah. Well, you know, uh, we, we get the fan mail. You get the fan mail. I get the fan mail. But I, I, I do. And when the guests, I mean, we had a guest come off the, on the show the other day, at, and they were off the air at 8.30. And 8.31, bam, they sent a beautiful, you know, thank you note for, for what a yeah. great job. And, and that goes out to, to Rachel and Bridget also because, you know, if without them doing the hard work, doing the research, I mean, you vet these people before they come on the show. You don't just slap oh. anybody on the show. You you actually have to. How many people do you have to go through before you find somebody that you want to put on the show that you feel is going to do good to to for the listening audience as well as our brands, our, our combined brands? Well, let me put this in perspective for you. So, okay, so this year alone, um, we have booked and you've interviewed this year over a hundred and fifty CEOs this year, a hundred and fifty. So out of that 150, we had to probably filter through at least 2,000 to get to your 150 that, that have been broadcasting on your show. And of that 2,000 background checks and interviews and prep calls and just massive amounts of time to break it down. But at the end of the day, it's worth it because it, we, you know, there's a reason why we're number one right now, and, and uh, it's, 
it's because we go through that process. Not all of us use the shows do that, and, and you know, we're fortunate. And, and Michael, I mean, it, if we, you know, I'm looking forward to the day that, that I see you holding that Peabody Award because it's a uh, it's a pat on everybody's back, and it's a uh, it's a sign that we did a good job. Yep, it is. Hey, man, let's uh, let's do this. I want to drill down more into uh, um, our our relationship, what goes on to make a show like this, and what we have in the future. But let's take a break right now and. Uh, come back and, and drill down more into it on the other side, all right? That'd be great. All right, we'll be right back with Matt Bird. He is the president of 1-800-PublicRelations.com. And again, special thanks to Rachel Eduardo, Bridget Fleming, the entire team at 1-800-PublicRelations.com. We'll be right back on the other side of this break. Are you keeping pace with the change in business development technology? Make the job of your sales team easier and lower cost. The world is moving to mobile apps. Digital publishing is the way of the future. For less than $90 a month, Cookie can create a professional mobile app for your company. If you don't have one now, you'll be left behind. Make marketing more powerful, more successful. Big results don't need big production and big costs anymore. Contact cookie.com now. Cookie is the solution for you to create content live, easily, and fast to your own mobile applications. Cookie.com. K O O K E.com. Attention, men and women. Are you suffering from back pain, neck pain, or joint discomfort? Would you like to learn of a non surgical solution? Call American MedFix at 972-591-6675. That number again, 972-591-6675 to receive free info on how you may qualify for natural creams that may provide you with the relief you are seeking. All products are 100% made in the USA. Call now, 972-591-6675 or visit AmericanMedFix.com. If you want to work until you drop, reduce your standard of living in retirement or lose more of your hard-earned money in the stock market, then just ignore me. But if you'd like to generate a steady, predictable income, I'm talking real wealth and financial security for as long as you live, then listen to this. A free report is now available that reveals the money-making secrets Wall Street and the banks don't want you to know. It reveals how you can get guaranteed growth, safety, and wealth-building power without risking your money in the Wall Street casino. To get your free special report, visit bankonyourself.com. That's bankonyourself.com. Every day, millions of Americans are putting themselves at risk just by writing a check using a credit card or an ATM. We're talking identity theft. And that's why the National Foundation for Credit Counseling has compiled a list of tips to help reduce the risk of having your personal information stolen. Never give out personal or account information when responding to a phone or email inquiry unless you initiated the transaction. Open your credit card and other bills promptly and reconcile your receipts and accounts. Just because your credit card is in your wallet, it doesn't mean you're not at risk. Skimming or stealing credit and debit card numbers is a huge part of identity theft. If you've been a victim or think your personal information has been compromised, you need to act immediately. The identity theft recovery process can be long and daunting, but you don't have to do it alone. Contact a certified counselor at the National Foundation for Credit Counseling at 1-800-388-2227, who can guide you every step of the way. This has been a public service message from the NFCC. Welcome back to the Traders Network. I'm Michael Yorba, your host. Thanks for joining us. Broadcasting to you live from the Dallas KFXR 1190 AM High Art Media Studios and worldwide through yorbamedia.com. All right, I'm joined with a, a very good friend of mine, partner and uh, a business associate, uh, Matt Bird, uh, president of 1-800-PR, publicrelations.com. And uh, Matt, We've had a hell of a year. Excuse me, I shouldn't even say that. But we yeah, it's been a, it's been a tumultuous year. The good, the bad, the up, the down. Uh-huh. You know, this is this is a guy that actually flew down here once he once he said uh, uh, almost a year and a half ago. You know what? I get it. I like it. I know we could do something. Actually, jumped on the plane, came down here, came out to the ranch, hung out with me, and worked out a plan. 
and 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 we put our heads together and it worked out wonderfully but we, go you're going to say something matt no we certainly did i mean and i i, I think back and it, it seems like a hell of a lot longer sorry to use the same but a lot longer than a year ago it seems like a decade after this last year but it's yeah no keep going yeah well here's let, let's change gears and move around a little bit here Let's talk about the investments, because that's why people come on the show. That's why they listen uh-huh. to the show. What can I do with my money? Where can I go to feel secure I'm, I'm, and, and actually see some alpha out of what I'm doing? And I want to hear from you about PR uh, affecting public companies and, and, and how, how it works on the investment side. And, and, and should investors mm-hmm. be paying, what should investors be paying attention to with their investable capital? That's a great question. I mean, are you asking me, like, how does PR play a part in someone's investment strategy? Yes. Um, I would say it it should play a large part depending on um, what it is you're investing in. And if you're you're looking in the small cap or micro cap arena, um, I mean, the big thing I'd be looking at is what is is the company's communication strategy? Too many companies get end up becoming public to to raise capital and and find a vehicle to, to, you know, to take funds in and usually they're they're put into some sort of corporate or public shell and and um um you typically you have or you've got cobblers operating a, a corporate vehicle and they're not necessarily CEOs of, of they sh- shouldn't necessarily be a CEO of a publicly traded company and well, so the eye is really on the IR side or the stock side and and, and on the business side but less on 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 the uh, on promoting the business and it's really it's really unfortunate because a lot of these these smaller companies really um, get kind of tripped up by the whole investor relation aspect to, to being public and when when the reality is it's the PR side that drives market confidence not the IR side. So you know from my perspective, I mean if I were talking to investors, I, I would I would um, I would say take a look at what their PR and communication strategy is because public companies live and die by their press releases and, and it's as simple as that. If a company is just turning out 8Ks and 10Qs, I would stay away from them. If the company is putting out news on products and, 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 the pro- and management's productivity on a consistent basis, at least then you have transparency. So in, in my experience, the companies who communicate the best have the strongest shareholder uh, uh, portfolio and have a consistently liquid uh, security um, or currency for that matter. So, um, you know, and, and I'm not just saying it's a self-serving thing. I mean, I, I invest the same way. I look at companies and, and see whether or not they have got a, a, um, a stable outreach uh, and a communication plan because um, how are people supposed to know whether the buyer or sell a stock if, if the manager's not communicating to the market? Well, if somebody's out there listening and, and they're starting to pick up on the message that you've got to be able to communicate your message to the investors or the clients of some sort, give us a takeaway message. What would be the discerning factor from a good PR agency or a bad PR agency? What are some of the earmarks of the good ones? You know what I mean? Um, I, I think that any company that engages a PR agency, it, it's, it's a productive exercise. I think that the big disconnect um, between good and bad is what management thinks is relevant to the market versus what the market thinks relevant to the market. Warren Buffett um, had a quote that, that, uh, that I, I really that I, I, that I follow with my own shareholders and, and I follow with the things that I do, which is that he invests in companies um, or he treats you know, Berkshire Hathaway, it's the same way that he expects to be treated by the companies that he invests in with, with transparency and communication. So, you know, I think the big step for a lot of companies is it starts from the CEO and works down. Whether they believe in communicating to the market, whether they think it's relevant or not, it doesn't matter. Shareholders need to see something. It's like any other, it's just like a relationship that you're in. You need to communicate back and forth. And a lot of times they think, oh, it's not relevant enough. It's not big enough. They're looking for that big home run press release when all shareholders need is just a little bit of clarity on what's going on. You hired a new, a new person. You hired a, a new VP of sales. Uh, you, you closed a $10,000 deal. It doesn't need to be a million-dollar deal. I mean, these things, they, they all add up to, to, to shareholders feeling comfortable that progress is being made. And, and so that being said, you know, taking the step in, in, in the direction of a PR agency, I think, is the first right step. And then from there, you find out whether or not it's a right fit or not. 
you know, everybody has their core competencies, and sometimes not all PR firms fit the companies that they're working with, and so you just you just got to continue to you know keep at it. It's just like you know any other relationship that you're in. I mean, we all date and have been in and out of relationships our whole lives, and and finally you find the right one, and and uh, and then you stick with it when when once you find that you find uh, something that works for you. Yeah, I agree. But one of the things that gets me is that you are really known for for a blended strategy, being uh-huh. able to combine multiple forms of communication into a connected blended strategy. You know, tell the audience, I mean, how, how you came up with what you're doing and found, and we found each other and then how that how that turned out for you. I mean, th- there's some insight there that people should be able to take away with, Walk you know. Away. There are lots of different types of people out there that are in business. They're innovators, they're entrepreneurs, they're problem solvers. I, I, I don't think of myself as an entrepreneur or um, even an innovator, to be quite honest. I'm, I, lo- I solve problems. Um, so the stuff that we come up with, like you and I, for example, and, and the, the, the relationship that we have, what I did for the NASDAQ, what I've done for PR Newswire, Retail Industry Commerce, Monk Media, um, you know, for the content marketing industry. I mean, it really comes on the heels of solving problems that others before us haven't figured out that the solutions are already out there. It's just a matter of applying a methodology in just a different way. And so I really can't take the credit for doing a lot of the innovation because the technology stuff already exists. It's just a matter of applying it in, in a different way and, and connecting dots where dots before had never really been connected. And, and, and that's how innovation is kind of born. I think you find that a lot of people who are entrepreneurs and very innovative, they build stuff for themselves, not for the market. So if you're solving problems, if you're innovating based upon a problem that needs to be solved, it means that you're building a model that has an existing demand for it versus coming up with an idea of a better widget. It might not necessarily need a better widget. The widget might be fine the way it is. Um, so, like, for example, push technology versus you know, contextual marketing. I mean, push technology has been around for a long time, but it was never a, a demand for it when it was developed. Just because someone can build it doesn't mean they're going to come. So on that front, I, uh, uh, I, I believe in small calculated failures. I believe that success comes on the heels of failure. And anybody who finds themselves in a situation that they're winning without failure doesn't really deserve to be there. They, they somehow ended up there and, uh, um, and, and it's, it was the product of the right place at the right time, but they didn't earn it. And so typically, um, you know, it doesn't last, um, if that makes mistakes. I mean, if that makes sense. It does. It does. Now, you've got a great way of drawing out the real message in the clients that you you take on and one what you do with crafting uh, the message on your end and then how, how it comes to me. Give us some insights in, in an actual working condition, how how you are able to draw out what the true message is. Somebody may think, I, this is how I built it, this is how it works, but how, but, but the, conveying the message to make, make it appealing to the investor and the, and the customer, how do you draw that out? What are some of the th- things that you do? You know what? I, I, I don't. I don't do that. It, it might. It might seem like that. I, I, that it's. It's me behind the scenes pulling the strings. But the reality is, it's the, it's the companies themselves. It's just a matter of directing the communication in the right area. Most companies have all the information they need. Like if you talk to a CEO who's having a problem, reality is, is that they already know the answer to it. They just need to bounce off of somebody. And 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 in in this case, when it comes to communication, you know, the content's already there. Company already has the drivers. We just direct that content. We direct the, their productivity, to, you know, focused into us, you know, um, into the market where others can hear it. And you know, uh, most CEOs are, you know, they support and they communicate within the four walls of their organization and and PR agencies. And, and what we do is we communicate for those public companies outside the four walls of their organization. We, we are the, we're the, the, the speakerphone, if you will, outside their company. So, you know, all we do is relay and re-communicate what's already been developed internally. And sometimes we tweak here and there, but it's just because we're outside the box. And, and when, you're inside the, when you're inside the box, it's sometimes difficult to kind of see the messaging from a different side. And you know, we just, the process of flushing it out. 
You know, uh, we're, we've got about a minute left in the interview, uh, Matt. Uh, are there any any physical events that you and your team are going to be at that uh, maybe somebody in the audience can go to and you know shake your hand and see you? I will be in Seattle drinking eggnog with my family. That's about the only event I have planned for December. <laughs> but I guess the better question is, let me ask you, Michael, what are you doing for Christmas? What, what, what are your plans for the holidays? Well, I'm going to spend them with my girlfriend and uh, her family. I got invited to uh, to Christmas dinner, and uh, it's going to be just a, 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 a something that uh, um, I'm sorry I couldn't have done last year, but uh, it's really going to be a nice family experience for me this year. I really appreciate it, be able to get invited and take it into the family. Excellent. That's outstanding. Well, for those of you out there who don't know Michael, Michael's got a beautiful ranch out in Dallas, Texas, and he's got some horses and has uh, had had uh, quite the year actually on that ranch. You've, you've had you've had what a broken leg, yeah. a broken thumb, <laughs> finger, finger, a broken finger. <laughs> yeah, let, yeah, really. I'll roll it out. Look, my wife died. I got a I got a broken leg. I got oh. a broken finger. Oh my gosh, that, that's been you know you've been here what, what at least once or twice. I've yeah, it's yeah. Let's. I'm so happy to see 2015. It's had, it's had quite quite the year, but it's, it's ending up great. And and hopefully next year we've got uh, we've got some big things on the horizon. And, and you still got another week before before the year end break. And I think you got a great guest coming on next. Um, and listen, I, I know we're running to a close here, and I want to thank you for having me on. You know, we had a last minute cancellation, and, and I appreciate you asking me to come on the show today. It just was was unexpected, and I hope I, I filled the content well. But uh, um, you've got an amazing guest. Who's who's on next? Uh, Dan Bates, Chief Executive Officer, Windstream Technologies, uh, way ahead of the curve. Thanks, Matt. Yeah, you bet. You bet. This sounds like I'm going to stay tuned in. So uh, I appreciate it. Michael, thanks so much for having me on the show. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. We'll talk to you soon. And special thanks to Rachel Eduardo and Bridget Fleming for all their PR and media support at 1-800-PublicRelations.com. We'll be right back. Thank you.